everybody. This is Chattermio, ChattermioCoaching.com. What a wonderful day. Hope everybody's having an excellent day. I love you all. Just want to talk about there's the African philosophy of Ubuntu. Ubuntu. It is the, it's usually translated to I am because we are, right? And so when we kind of break that down, the philosophy states that we exist because everybody else exists around us, right? And so without others, we would cease to be. And so there was a really excellent story that I read on, I believe it's on LinkedIn this, uh, or, or LinkedIn or Facebook or some social media site, right? Where um, this researcher was playing with some kids in Africa and he put a fruit basket over by a tree and then he had the children line up way far out and he said, whoever finishes this first gets the basket of fruit. And so he said, ready, set, go. And all the kids grabbed each other's hands and they all ran together and they all got to that basket and they sat down and they enjoyed the fruit together. And the re researcher was a little confused. He says, why did you do that? He said, whoever got here first could have had that basket of fruit to themselves. And they said, I, we are, I am because we are, right? So we are one, we do this together or we don't do it at all. Now, if we look around the world today and we look around, uh, especially at uh, politics and all the things that are happening with the uh, Black Lives Matter movement and uh, police brutality, and we have one common denominator in that, and that is the media, right? The media has done a very good job at separating people, really taking them away from friends and loved ones, really... Um, making everybody seem like enemies or if we look at the pandemic part everybody is going to get you sick right everybody is is infected and everybody's going to cause you pain and worry and death and i'm not saying that it's not smart to do you know to be to be safe during these times i'm just saying look at what the media is doing look at how it is portraying uh these stories and the effect it's having on society and so People who are really engaged in the news and the news media, they are more likely to be fearful, to be angry, to be frustrated, and to be, I guess, self-serving right now. So these are the people that run to the to the uh, uh, market and they buy, you know, truckloads of toilet paper and hand sanitizer because. They want to make sure they don't run out. Meanwhile, they're not looking out for their fellow human being, right? And so the same thing has been happening in politics. You're either this way or you're that way, right? You're either on the presumably presumably good side or the bad side, right? There's no good or bad. There's no right or wrong. It's all our perceptions of how we've done this. Yes, if we look at Buddhist philosophy, anytime we hurt another being, yes, then that is considered a negative action. Is it wrong? Not necessarily, but those people deal with the karma. But we're getting off track here. What we have to realize is that all of us work together as one. All of us are together as one, whether we like whether we recognize that or not. So what we should be doing is working together as one, working together to solve problems in this society, in our societies, in our world, and, and in this universe in general. But what often happens is people are so conditioned by the media to put all their energy into a candidate, this political candidate, right? So this guy over here, is gonna save everybody. Well, this guy over here is gonna ruin everything, right? And so this is how we've been manipulated to think. And there are millions of people that have bought into that. They've drank the clue, they've drunk the Kool-Aid, right? So they understand, or they think they understand that they either are on the winning side or the losing side, right? When in actuality, we're all on the same side, no matter what. And so when we can recognize that we are connected as beings, like the trunk of a tree, you know, the roots go down below, but if you're in a forest, they are connected to each other. They're always communicating somehow or another. And so 
we are the same way. We have these energetic roots that move down into the earth and there's this invisible field. If we can imagine a grid kind of being layered over the top of us, and this is what quantum physics tells us, this grid of energy being layered over the top of us that's connecting each and every one of us at all times. So those of you who are empathic beings, more empath like empath beings, and uh, they're, you're more likely to feel that negative energy. So when you have you know, a, a collective group of people feeling in a negative manner, if you walk into that group, immediately you're gonna feel uncomfortable. You're gonna feel like something is wrong, something's not right with this group, right? And so we are always able to sense this. All of us are, whether we're empaths or not. Empaths are just more open to it open to receive those messages. And so what we need to understand is we are all connected. We are all brother and sister, mother and father. We are all one. We are all one being. And when we can work in unity and harmony, we can take back our power and we can become leaders of ourselves instead of waiting for others to lead us. And so when we do that, we truly create opportunities that didn't exist before. You know, we're really tapping into the potential of ourselves and the universe around us. So next time you're outside and you see, you know, maybe you're at the office or maybe you're walking the dog and you see that neighbor that's a little bit uh, annoying or can be bothersome sometimes, wish them love, you know, wish them peace, wish them joy, wish them amazing day ahead and all the luck in the world. And so what happens when we do that, it changes the energy we have towards these people, right? And we begin to see them as our reflective selves. We begin to understand that we are all in this together, whether it is being portrayed out in society or not, we are always working together. We are always connected. So think of that as you go through your day and think of that when you get cut off in traffic or you have that coworker who may not be the one that you most are most excited to see at work you know or the parent of the ch child that you know maybe can drives you crazy sometimes that your your kids are friends with and just understand that we're all connected. We're all one. We all deserve love. We all deserve joy. We all deserve happiness. And next time that person upsets you or any person upsets you, wish them love, wish them joy, wish them an ab abundance of, of all these things that we would like ourselves. And also understand that just like us, all they want in life is to be happy, to be truly happy and appreciated, okay? So even when... When we can start doing that for them, you'll start to notice that personality change. They'll be less, um, it'll be a less intense experience next time you see them. Maybe they're, 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 they're less annoying. Maybe uh, you're able to connect with them on a different level. Maybe you're able to find common ground somewhere, okay? So just let go of this idea that we're separate beings. We need to, to constantly uh, work for our own gain in this world and understand that when we can work together and we can do it in a harmonious manner, then we can really change this world in a manner that we want to see. And we can understand that we don't need these leaders anymore. We can govern ourselves because we're doing it from a different place. All right, this is Chattermeo with ChattermeoCoaching.com. I love you all. Hop on to Amazon, pick up my new book. It is called Wake Up and Recalibrate by Chad Armijo. And hit that like and subscribe button. I'll see you in the next video.